Hello. My name is Keshwani. This is K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the SAT. We'll be using this book, the official SAT study guide, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order to follow my work. Today, we'll start our journey of solving the SAT math problems. You and I are going to solve all the math problems starting from exam number one all the way through exam number 10. There are 10 exams in this book. It will take some time, but today is, the, is where we begin our journey. Here's the, here's the layout, here's the, here's, here's the plan for, the, for, for, for what, what I have in mind. We'll do all the SAT math problems that I just described to you in this book here. In addition to that, if you want to learn some algebra, if, you, if your algebraic skills are, 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 are not uh, as sharp as, should, as, as they should be, uh, I said skills, that's why I'm saying plurals. Uh, watch these videos, there are 200 videos on my channel that you will find. The first 100 videos deal with the algebra, uh, elementary algebra. There are 100 more videos that deal with the algebra word problems. Word problems are very important, they appear all the time on the SAT. In addition to that, you will find some videos that deal with geometry. These videos do not deal with geometry by topics, but I solve geometry problems and in the process of solving the problems, you learn the concepts. That's what it is. In addition to that, starting from today, you will also find on my channel videos that will help you improve your grammar. The writing portion of the SAT, the vast majority of the writing portion, the, the writing portion of the so-called writing portion of the SAT, the vast majority of your score in the writing portion of the exam actually comes from simple multiple choice grammar questions. Our job is to make sure that we understand the basic concept of elementary concept of English grammar. And we will do so by doing all the grammar questions out of this book. The very first question from grammar appears on page number 407. So this is the tag that you want to look for. SAT grammar, day one, and then page number. Even if you don't put the page number, if you just put in SAT grammar, day one, and with my name, it should pop right up. In addition to that, if you are interested in improving your reading score, the best thing to do to improve your reading score is to make sure that you improve your vocabulary. And you will find some vocabulary videos on my channel. Just look for them. Anyway, enough said. Let's begin, let's begin our journey. So today we are doing the math question. Right now we are doing the math question. So I am going to erase this bottom part. Let's turn. Make sure that you have the book in front of you. If you do not have the book with you, stop the videos right now, acquire the book, get the book, turn to page number 400 and 396, read the problem, and then follow, follow the work. Now, here's the deal. There are 20 questions in this section. Okay, listen carefully. There are 20 questions in this section. On the top of the section, it tells you 20 questions. SAT is a standardized exam. And one of the characteristics of the standardized exam is that all the questions are arranged in the order of difficulty. There are 20 multiple choice questions in this section. I'm turning the pages to make sure they're not mixed up with something else like gradient questions and so forth. They are all multiple choice questions and there are 20 of them. Had there been 21, had there been 21, it would have been very easy for us, then we would have been able to divide into thirds because the entire section is divided up into thirds. The first one-third of the questions are easy, the next one-third are medium, the last one-third are difficult. So one through six or one through seven, if you like. One through, one through seven are easy, seven through fourteen are medium, and then fourteen through twenty are hard. The first two questions that I'm about to do, they are very simple questions, very straightforward questions. Let's take a look. It says, page 396, it says, if x equals to if x equals to 4, which of the following is greatest in value? Which of the following is greatest in value? A, B, C, D, and E. The first one says x plus 1. X plus 1 would be 5 times x plus 2, which will be if x plus 2 would be 6. 5, 5 times 6 is 30. The next one is x plus 1 x plus 1 would be 4 plus 1 which is 5 times x minus 1 
Well, since it's x minus 1, x is 4, it's 3, this is already less than 30, so I don't, worry, I don't have to worry about what it is. x minus 2, which is 2, times x plus 2, which is 4, 2 times 4 is going to be less than 30. x minus 2, x minus 2 for d, which is 2, times x plus 1, which is 5. 2 times 5 is going to be less than 30. x minus 4, well, x minus 4 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. We don't have to worry about what the second part is. 0 times, 0 times any number is 0. So the answer is A. As I told you, it's very simple, very straightforward. Hardly anybody who takes the exam is going to get this question wrong. And if you do get this question wrong, the reason for that is very simple. It's some kind of carelessness on your part. It's not because it's difficult. It's very straightforward. Let's do number two. Train Trains A, B, and C pass through a station at different speeds. Train A's speed is three times train B. So, so let's make a note. A is three times B. Or if you write it in equation, A, how do you write is in mathematical language? Is means equal three times B. And train C's speed is twice train A. And train C C is twice A. Again, C is means equal twice A, two times A. Now let's do our work. That's the first thing. You have to absorb it. You have to digest the information before you before you worry about what, what the punchline is. Now we'll read, read the punchline. What was train C speed? What was train C's speed in miles per hour if B's speed was 7 miles per hour? Alright, so if B is 7 miles per hour, that tells us, so replace B with 7, that tells us that A was 21. If A is 21, you put it in here, A is 21 times 2, well, C is 42. Very good, that's our answer. The answer is 42. That's all, we're done for today. I will see you tomorrow where we will start the problems on the next page. And that's the idea. We're gonna, I'm going to make short clips where you can sit down in one sitting and do one or two problems. And as long as you do that every day, make sure you devote some time every day to do some math problems, some grammar questions, and spend some time watching the vocabulary videos, learn a few words here and there. And as long as you do it on a consistent level, uh, on a consistent, consistent basis over a long period of time, six months or maybe even a year this is a, this is these are perfect videos for people who are uh, even as young as freshmen sophomores and of course juniors start early in the uh, early in the uh, early in the process uh, in the high school and you won't have to do too much work don't put it off until two or three months before the exam the, the earlier you start the more you will learn and easier you will find it to be all right i'll see you tomorrow i'm done with the sermon Amen. Bye now.